One of the silos built to withstand a nuclear blast in 1960, completed in 1962, and active for the Cuban Missile Crisis. This silo was used as the VIP site for important ranking visitors to Dias Air Force Base. It had some special attention given to it in its construction. Twelve Atlas Intercontinental ballistic missile silos surround Dias, all retired. Most of them have been purchased by private parties and restored for various purposes. Back in the 60s, all used to hold ICBM Atlas Fs, approximately 70 feet long without the nose cone. They weighed 250 or 300,000 pounds fueled, and empty, they weigh less than 20,000. Bruce Townsley owns the decommissioned silo in Oplin. Townsley says it would have taken one of those missiles around 30 minutes to get to the then Soviet Union. There's a really nice graphic on uh, the web about that. It's a picture of a Domino's pizza box on a blast door. And it says uh, worldwide delivery in 30 minutes or less, so the next one is free. Townsley purchased his silo in 1997, remodeled it to his liking with two bathrooms, a living space, and a full kitchen. He's now lived here for 25 years. He says it was something he felt he had to do. But I never had any question about moving here, about undertaking. It just was like, yeah, you're going to do this. Heading underground into the launch control center, there are around 55 steps leading to the silo. Two floors. The lower level was used for business. All the equipment was kept down here along with the launch control console. You are looking at an original console that has been rewired and relit. So that when you press a button and start it up, uh, what will happen is it will mimic a successful launch. The top level was where the crew, pulling 24-hour shifts, slept and ate. There were bunk beds, there was a full kitchen, uh, a bathroom with several stalls, a shower. And as you can see from the construction of the tunnel... A tunnel made from a steel culvert leads to the missile's home base. And uh, into the silo we go. We are inside of the silo now where the missile originally was kept. Now this enclosure area goes down 185 feet and Bruce says that his silo is one of two that he knows of to get one of those silo doors open. Townsley says the success of the restoration of his silo is largely because of a community effort, like getting this almost three foot thick silo door open with a ram installed by volunteers. Wanting something to leave all of this too, Bruce tells us he's in the process of creating a nonprofit with some other people. With the project uh, that we're embarking on now with the Atlas Missile Museum, uh, trying to do a nonprofit to create some kind of a hub for restorations, especially with the Abilene Group. Uh, also, uh, as a way to preserve artifacts as we stumble across them. What do you have to say to yourself accomplishing all of this? I am beyond smug. <laughs> I would have to say, if the truth be known, I'm really beyond smug. And I try to be nice about it, but damn it, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs>